um, to come off um, that game in Chicago, the enormity of the game, and then not get in until 4 in the morning, and then bounce back and have to play this kind of game when they're playing a zone and they're not going to stop playing. I was really proud of the guys. Um, I think part of it, uh, I love playing against zone as a coach because you have to pass the ball. You have no choice. You may not want to, but you have to pass the ball. And they pass to each other. Uh, 20, 26 assists. Um, making threes, Trey in the middle, um, and they stuck with it. They didn't care. Like we're, this is, we're hoping you start missing. And slow start in the second half. You know, Reed was ter tremendous. So was uh, Rob, and there's a lot of good stuff. We had, you know, should have had six guys in double figures, which is how we like to do this. A couple too many turnovers. Like it's not a crazy number but it's four or five more than we normally get because we were just making the hardest play instead of just making an easy play. So, questions? Yeah. Uh, Cal, how beneficial is it to have somebody like Trey that if somebody's going 2-3 zone on you, you can just put him right in the middle and know that he's going to be able to, to start those hockey assists or get, get an assist of his own? Yeah, that's, uh, we found that out in, in Toronto. Like when they went zone, it was like bang, 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 basket. And uh, he feels really comfortable in there. So what will happen is it's going to open up behind him because if you do play a 2-3, you're not going to back away from him. You're going to push all the way up. Or you're going to push one of your guards way back, which gives the way Reed shot it, Rob shot it, DJ shot it. They all made shots from that. Coach, you guys took Tuesday night the most threes you've ever taken in since you've been here. Tonight, you made the most threes you've made since you've been here. Just what is probably because I've got a good shooting team, and when I haven't had good shooting teams, we don't take as many threes. Because here's the one thing: you probably like winning matters here a lot to a lot of people. So you you have your team and you coach. Sometimes you have injuries, and here's what you're left with, and this is how you coach. But the, we got guys here that got a green light because they're really skilled. It's not about how you're jumping, running. It's that you're skilled with that ball. We got a lot of skilled guys here. Is it just the skill and the ability to make it, or are these guys making that extra pass, going at the speed you want them to? That what is too, it that's opening up fast. those plays? Let me, let me, you know, I, every year that I coach, um, especially here, but even – the later years of both the other two programs. There was an expectation that you were supposed to win, and there was an expectation that individual players were supposed to be able to do X, Y, Z. So the weight of the world, the, the, what there's, that is there. It's always been here for every player. And I'm going to be honest, it will never change. There's an expectation. Some guys will play like they have house money. And other guys you see playing are a little tentative, thinking a little bit too much. Every player that could really play that I've coached has been that way. And you know what? What I tell them, it's not changing now. you got to learn to deal with it. You have to learn to deal with it. It is not going away. You're at Kentucky. Every game is someone's Super Bowl. They're going to come in here and play out of their minds. Now, guys go to the NBA. And they say, well, this guy could have been drafted. Yeah, they all, when they redraft, my guy should have been drafted lower. They redraft. Now they'll say, well, they didn't shoot it as much or didn't do this or you played a certain way. How about this one? They all know how to deal with expectations and they go in that league and it, none of that stuff phases them. They're not, they go in that league and and that's why I say you're going to regret not taking that guy until then. And so this team is going through that now. You know it. You can see it. It's fine. It's part of the process. They're feeling my, the expectation. I'm supposed to, 
And then you'll see another guy that's, I'm just playing. House money. Who was that today? Say his name. Say it. And who else? And Reed. House money. And this is playing. We got to get a team full of guys with that mentality. Now, well, I come out when I make a mistake or miss. You played 30 minutes. Not true. The expectations are high and you're struggling to deal with them. That's all of this team. Now, Rob and Reed start playing really well. We're all going to expect them to play that way, and they're going to have to deal with it. That's what's great about Kentucky. The guys that fight through that end up going, and they succeed. Now, they were talented, or they wouldn't be there. But all this other stuff, well, they were this, and they were that. That's why I laugh. When a guy like Kaysen, you knew what Kaysen was. You saw him here. So we're going through that. That's part of what I have to do and work with. I got to let him know I believe in every one of you. You got to believe in you as much as I believe in you. And, and then letting them play through some mistakes. It's hard. You know me. It's hard. Like today, Robert had three turnovers in a row. I had to take him out. You can't stay in, man. He had three in a row. I didn't walk. Y'all walked twice. No, I didn't. We'll watch the tape. You walked twice. Matter of fact, you took two extra steps. Then you drove baseline when all you had to do was swing the ball and dribbled it out of bounds. Come over here and sit down. I told him, I'm not going to stop coaching you because you could be really ridiculously good. So, but we got, we got a good group, man. I mean, just a good group of guys. We, look, I'm not, we need one of these big guys. We just got to have a big guy. We get that, and everybody will say, well, it'll screw you up. That's, let me deal with that. I'll deal with that. Um, I'd like to have all three of them, to be honest with you. Sure. One more question. Do I got to do radio out there? I answered 15 questions here. You were talking about the, the expectations and the weight of it all. Can you sense it all with DJ, any of the, I'm Dewan's kid, I'm Milt's grandkid? He's had it on him. That? He's had it on him the whole his whole life. Each of them NBA players. He's coming in. He was the number one player, number four player, whatever it is. But Justin and that every guy that I've had like that, if they learn to deal with it and not push it, own your performance. Own it. I didn't do it. You played 30 minutes. So don't say about me. You played 30 minutes. Own your performance, and then learn to deal with this stuff. I keep telling all these guys, if you talk more, and this, again, I'm talking mind stuff, so you guys won't understand what I'm saying, but when you, your mind it can't do three things at one time. So if you're talking on defense, it can't think about how bad you're shooting the ball. Can't. Can't do Come on, what do I do? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you could stop and you can think of that. So I'm just trying to get him to be more aggressive, talk more, get out of your way for all of these guys, not just DJ, not just Justin, not just Jordan, all of them. Um, but that's part of coaching and coaching here. If you don't get that every kid comes in here, and, and I'll be honest with you folks, there's a lot at stake. That's why I don't take this lightly for these kids a lot at stake for them and their families. So how do I get them right? Can I do it for them? I can't do it for them. I can put them in situations. I can teach and do, and then you put them on the stage, they gotta go. They gotta be that star. They gotta come out and really do their thing. And let me say this, that's what's crazy about where this team is right now. Like. Today, I thought DJ played better, but all of a sudden, Robin Reed played so well, you just, Justin did some good things. He's still not where he's going to be. I'm trying to do some different things to get him going. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm loving coaching these guys. I walk in the gym every day. I know they want to be coached. If you ever were able to watch a practice, which none of you will, but if you were ever, you would know that they want to be coached. Look at these guys. And it's not me screaming, yelling, throwing balls, kicking. It's that 
you're doing coaching and you can see they're locked in. So, you know, we got, hey, let me just say this. They played well. Um, they never got out of, out of sync. Um, we're playing a St. Joe's team coming up. Every player back from last year, player of the year in their league um, preseason guard, they shoot 35 threes a game. If they make 20, you lose. But they're taking 35. It ain't like they're taking 21. And so we're going to really have to be locked in in how we're playing. I haven't watched the tape yet. They're 4-0. I think they won tonight 5-0. and So we got a hard game against the Atlantic 10 team that's going to be one of those teams in that league. So we'll see where we are um, and how we do. Thanks, folks.